Hey there guys, we are back today with another design stream. What you're looking at here is a bottle my brother gave me. He has a smaller capper for this and basically a capper is something that using this little bell shaped thingy uh, puts the cap on, crimps it. So he's got a small one that does smaller bottles. He doesn't have one that does a big bottle like this. Originally, I had just suggested that I weld some stuff together to make a jig and j just do it that way. Unfortunately, that is not going to happen because I can't help myself. So, I did my research, looked up a couple different designs for bottles this big, and we got stuff like this. This is the general shape that you'll come across. Uh, the older ones, instead of having this pull handle here, which impacts this would be ratcheted or whatnot we're going to stick with this design because this design is prevalent as you can see uh this one in particular so originally he said oh do you think you could 3d print it i was like heck no i don't think a 3d print is gonna hold up on that but the fact of the matter is that they have at least this part in plastic on this particular design and the rest of this looks to be cheap aluminium uh, it's one of those things I think I might 3D print this main section right here. I'm still a little skeptical on how it will hold up given the pressures, but it's one of those things at least we can try. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, again, originally I was going to keep my whole entire, uh, keep my design here simple, but the more I thought about it, the more that just plain is not going to happen. And since I did a lot of thinking about it. We're going to be going pretty quick on this. Uh, the other reason we're going to be going qu pretty quick on this is because I only got like an hour to record this. So <laughs> well, at the very least, we'll see how far we get. Uh, what I was thinking, again, if we hop back to the other screen really quick. Doo -doo -doo. We got a base plate, a shaft going up here, this connection unit thing which aligns everything handlebar uh, get out of here notifications handlebar press so those are the major components so we're just going to mimic that so uh, anyway back in here new component base plate uh, again one of these things I'm going to attempt to use materials that I have in the scrap bin at work. So, looking at my bottle here, switch you over. Oh, wrong button. That switched you over. Okay. Uh, I took the measurements off this already. This is like three, maybe a little bit larger at the base here. Height, it's something like 13, 14, 15, something in that range. I just did a quick measurement. I figured 16, I, I think it was 13, and 16 is what I'm thinking I'm just going to give my space, space room for, you know, another 3 inches off the top there. So that's we're gonna, what we're going to go with overall sizes. At least 3 inches plus a little bit of space around it for the plate, and then 16 inches up on the vertical shaft, and then wherever we end up with the rest of it. Because if we hop back over here, do 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 if we hop back over here we can see that uh, these actually come in a couple different designs so these two come straight off this way this one actually angles upwards looking at how all these pressures are going to work so this obviously is a lever it's going to come down and then this is going to be our pivot point right here. So as it impacts that, it will drive this pin or screw, whatever we put in here, up that way. And they have this rounded right here. I don't know how necessary that is for performance. I know obviously that will help it roll and push down. So while this is in the up position, you see how this is a bit higher and then there's a slot on the side here for it to go down. So it'll help it get over this hump. Again, these two actually have slots in them to keep the bar aligned. This one, it, I can't tell. It's hard to tell. Whether or not we do that is another thing. But as that pivots up, that goes that way. The force goes, you know, starts going this way because we're on that angle. And then as it rotates around and the handle's going that way, it's going to pull more this way. 
So this casing would be more in line with how the force is going because again, imagine the uh, pull handle being at this angle. That means that this tail end of the pull angle is going opposite of it, right? Pulling down this way, that's going opposite. So it's going in line with this one. So that kind of makes sense. Otherwise, as we get further down here, the other forces, so when we're going straight up, this is actually potentially going a little bit towards the back here, but mostly it throughout the range of motion, it's going to be pivoting, or most of the force, I should say, should be going towards the bottom angle here. And if we look at the rest of these, they all have slants at the bottom. So again, as this handle gets down this way, it's going to be pushing more towards the bottom here, which may be part of the reason why that is uh, flared like that to help support it. So we'll just keep that stuff in mind. This one obviously is the opposite. This is not flared downwards. This is flared upwards. But we'll keep stuff like that in mind as we're going. Uh, the other thing is you see how all these are tubes. I don't have access to tube scrap. So I'm going to be using a shaft. And I'm thinking I'm just going to mill the shaft into a double D shape. And then have it right up and down on that. Uh, double D shape just because then it will make it easier to drill holes through it to pin this in position these two obviously do not have pinholes in them so i'm guessing around the back side either the actual back side or the side furthest away from us on the left hand side of the machine if we're looking from the back right hand side of the machine if we're looking from the front there's probably a screw knob that tightens down for those two uh this one i thought i saw a model of this one where it actually had a spring-loaded mechanism here to retract the pin that's going into the front here uh, but this one this model if I recall correctly has slots in it in the face to uh, keep it in place we're gonna go with pins though we're gonna just put a whole bunch of pin holes down the side and then it can be pinned at whatever height so that's all the stuff I thought about while preparing for this and we will get back to making Again, zooming through pretty quick because I am on a bit of a time constraint. If we don't get done, then I'll just do a part two. But at the same time, actually, let's not center that just yet. At the same time, I was not able to stream over the past couple of days. So if I stream more, I'd want to stream something else. That I'm just changing. Obviously, all these are set to horizontal, vertical. Uh, but this one I just want to make sure is always perpendicular to that it's probably not going to come out up and be an issue but it's still something I'm going to do for the uh, person just to be precise most of my stock and most of my machines run in uh, at work at work I should say run in inches so we swap over to inches here the bottle I said was about three inches obviously this whoops I'm going to go ahead and make this five inches. So we got a roughly a five inch or a, a roughly an inch on each side. Again, depending on how it all cuts and whatnot. And then we need the vertical shaft at work. I have scrap that's 1.25. That's easy to get. Uh, the other sizes are not as simple for me to get. Well, the other sizes being one inch and one inch and a half would be the other two that I have access to. And I'm going to set this. And we'll just do a quarter inch. Oh, actually, that's right. Uh, the next thing is if I hop us back over here, these segments holding these up. So this one is one solid piece welded and bolted to the ground. This one's one solid piece bolted to the ground. This is a separate piece that that shaft then slides into. And that is, I believe, screwed down to the base. So. They're not terribly, especially because this last one is plastic. This is clearly plastic right here. They're not particularly concerned about that breaking. So I could 3D print and see if it holds up a base. The other thing that I'm thinking of doing, however, is either using an inch and a half and putting on a lathe and opening up the inside to an inch and a quarter, or we have brass, uh, bushings we have three inch brash bushings it's one of those things that is not scrap that's something that I would have to uh, put out money for 
but I could get it at work. And those are my two options for the, the back brass bushing. I've never actually welded those to steel before uh, with this base plate being a steel uh, cut off. I haven't actually welded steel to brass before and it sounds like it should be difficult, but we'll see whether or not it's actually doable. Again, keeping this from that point a quarter inch in just to give me space to work if I have to weld. Otherwise, if I have to change the design and I'm not able to weld to this plate, then I may go ahead and 3D print and it's one of those things. I'll make I take keep the whole entire quarter inch that I have here available. This distance here, getting these guys. Um, that's going to be that divided by two. Whoops. Don't hit enter just yet. That divided two plus that divided by two. And then the space between it, I'm going to call it an inch, I guess. I guess an inch sounds right. And then, okay, yeah. I was expecting us to be solid all around, uh, fully constrained, but I didn't have the center point just yet constrained. So there we go. So having the bottle in the center here, that more or less dictates where this edge is, which is why I don't have to define this uh, overall height here. The second I plug that in, if I wanted to change this or if I wanted this bottle to be off center, then I would have to dictate what this is. But at this point, it's eight and a half, it looks like. So that's what we're at. We're gonna be an eight and a half inch uh, deep by five inches wide is gonna be our base plate. And that is probably fine. I'm, I'm just thinking about what I have scrap. I should be able to have, yeah, yeah. That should be easy. That should be easy scrap to get. So let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, I was thinking about this one because one of those things, since there's the pressure is going to be Okay, um, actually, I didn't explain this one yet. I totally skipped over that one, that explanation. So the reason why I'm bothering to put a collar in here and not just welding this shaft straight to the plate, which was my original intention, my original intention back when I was just saying, I'll just, you know, put a bunch of scrap together and then make a jig for the, specifically this bottle size. Um, the Part of the reason I'm not welding this shaft and actually using collar to hold it in place uh, collar bushing, whatever it ends up being, is because I want it to be easier to store. And this is these kinds of shapes, which I've seen, you know, most upright machines are this kind of shape, right? And they take up an awkward amount of space, and it's one of those things. Um, my brother does this as a hobby at his home, so I want him to be able to at least take this apart and store it easier so that's why i'm including the uh why i'm not just welding this vertical shaft down to the plate and on that note uh, the other thing i was about to mention is uh i could put this hole here and have the shaft run all the way through uh, originally i was thinking i wouldn't be able to but the more i thought about it back to and i'm going to keep on switching back and forth here all the pressures should be going towards this shaft off of this lever arm. They all should be going in this direction, general direction, generally horizontally, and not necessarily down. Uh, so really, I think I could just have the shafts going all the way through. Uh, the reason I would do that is that it makes it easier to center everything. So if I, when I plasma cut this, if I have a hole here, I can put the shaft in the hole and then put the bushing around the shaft or, you know, if I have to hollow out an inch and a half piece, so be it. Um, I can put that around the shaft, just make sure that's square and perpendicular, and then I can weld like that. Whereas, if I don't have that, then it's kind of lining up by eye and making sure that it's centered. One of those things, if it's off a little bit, if this... Uh, vertical shaft the bushing that holds it is off a little bit to the left or right probably doesn't change the functionality of this thing at all again especially because a lot of the pressure as far as I can figure it just looking at it should be going mostly away or at least diagonally so not so much down towards the table but you know it's one of those things if I wanted to be more sure that I'd have it completely correct 
I could cut this hole out and it would probably be all right. I don't think my brother's going to end up with a dent in his table from it. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but just looking at how the uh, forces are going, I don't think it goes that way. Of course, I could also be stupid and just not want to know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> regardless, um, point being is that I will fill this extrusion back in. Uh, I could do 8th inch or 3 16th inch for the thickness of this deal. I have plenty of scrap of both of those. I'm just going to go 3 16th since it is a base. So I want it to be a little bit heavier. Uh, I probably have quarter inch even sitting around, but back to hobby, storage, etc. The quarter inch gets pretty heavy. And these rounding of the corners are just, you know, aesthetics. Probably find an inch and a quarter. And let's get the top of that. And I'm going to go ahead and get that. Um, actually, do I want that? So here's, here's my other thought. Because I don't want to necessarily cut that out if I'm leaving it solid, but I do want to line it up. In that case, I might want to do this. And basically my plan for this is set the plasma cutter, uh, set the plasma cutter itself, not the CNC part, but the plasma cutter itself, set the voltage there down to like 25 or something like that. It normally runs at 45 for this light cutting. For the light cutting, it runs at 45 amps. Uh, if I lower it down to 25, then it should just make a bunch of splatter and not actually cut, which then I just clean up and I have an outline of where it was supposed to be. And then I can align the bushing shaft hollow out section whatever i have you know with that area where it was gouged by the plasma cutter so that may be the better dxf to make uh the one where the outside line is the uh is it is where it is again assuming i'm not going to just cut this all the way straight out through i'll make a decision on that later if i do cut all the way through then i'd use the inner the inner hole right here and just cut that straight through. And then the bushing could be centered on that hole because that hole is then there. But if the bushing is gonna be centered with no hole, then having the outer line, the outline of the bushing already there works better. Again, just gouged, not actually cut. So that's where we're at. I've got a DXX, a DXF now for that, for the plasma cutter. And we'll hop back up here, bodies. Uh, and again, I'm going to go ahead and leave this hole here for now. Let's create a new component for the vertical, vertical shaft. And I'll go ahead and use top of plate. Use that one. And I'm just gonna take that outline there and bring it straight up. And I said 16 inches is what I was going with. So that's a vertical shaft. Now again, I'm pretty sure what I'm doing here is going to make this a double D. And it's not a, it's probably not a correctly sized double D. Well, it's definitely not gonna be a correctly sized double D. Again, I want what I'm looking for here, I'm going to make the 3D printed segment, you know, custom. It's not going to have to adhere to any uh, particular standards. And therefore, it can adhere to whatever this ends up being. Throwing a center line here. And then a center line on these guys make that centered there that yeah okay that is set to that guy and then so yeah, do this let me just finish this up so that i can re-explain oh okay that's already why is that hmm no okay that makes sense because these guys are the same distance from the center so yeah now i just need to make this cool linear 
So these guys are now constrained to be the same distance from the center. This guy, I will go ahead and constrain to the plate just for reference. So we'll make that parallel to that. Again, just to get a reference line. Whoops, not that guy, that guy. There we go. So now we can make our double D however we want it here. And uh, I only, I'll take out a quarter inch. There we go. So again, all this is just lined up so that it's centered to that. And then I will go ahead and use that to cut the double Ds. And one of those things, just put the shaft in the vise horizontally, perpendicular to the tool head, and then just rip down each side with the uh, end mill. That's how I'm planning on cutting this double D. And we'll make it minus 10. I'll call it 10 inches. My brother didn't really have a height that he cared for it to be adjustable at. So this is kind of extra. It's whatever I decide. And then again, next uh, point of business, as I was talking about, is the uh, pinholes. Uh, back to at work, I have those 516 pins. Do I have them around here? I do. One second. So if you tuned in for the other stream where I, where I was doing uh, the turntable, I've got these 516th rods for free from work. They're just extra pieces that we pull out of scrap. So I will go ahead and use this, these as the pins, any pins that I need. Switch this back. All right, so that I'm gonna call 3 eighths. So it's a little over 5 16th, right? So 5 16th plus 16th is 6 16th, which would be 3 eighths. And then I will put this divided by two divided by two, I keep on doing this, I probably should explain this in case you're not really familiar with any of this. Uh, if I divide the center point of the circle by two, right, that's the radius, so that gets me to the edge of the circle, and then I get just get to add whatever I want to, from the edge, so that was a quarter inch right there, so now the center of the circle, the edge of the circle is a quarter inch from the top there, and then we can go ahead and cut this. Bodies, symmetric, all in error so we'll do one side that's fine I've talked about that one before sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't pattern uh, obviously I want multiple pinholes going down this way so I'm going to do pattern in a line or pattern along path both base effectively the same thing in this situation at any rate it would be a different uh, thing in other situations but choose that hole that feature hole my path I'll go ahead and use this sketch line that I used to center the hole on and spacing uh, spacing I'll do every half how to let's see what this looks like does half inch inch look alright so if this is a half inch on centers that's four eighths minus three eighths is only an eighth yeah, you know, only if an H eighth is not really good enough. So I want a quarter, so it's a quarter between plus half of three eighths. Yeah, eight divided by three, divided by two, plus quarter. Oh, that's funny. Maybe I was wrong about that. Half inch, half inch is four eighths. Four eighths minus. Oh, minus three sixteenths, not three eighths. Okay, yeah, so I'll just leave it a half inch there. Okay, easy enough. And then I'll just eyeball up this distance here till we hit the bottom. Again, and this isn't, you know, some kind of engineering project. It's just making something cool. So there we go. That will be our holes to uh, position the lever arm. It actually looks like it's probably overkill, so I'll probably 
increase this to an inch and that should be like eight nine can we fit ten eh, ten doesn't look bad so we'll leave it at ten all right so there's our vertical shaft so let's hop back up here that's what we got so far uh, down here I'm gonna go ahead and rotate back to the base plate really quick. Let me, we'll activate first, new component. And uh, Warber base, I guess I'll call it. So uh, I'm hoping, I haven't actually checked to see what kind of scrap we have laying around with this, but we do have some I guess it's about eighth inch material that uh, rubber material that should in theory we should have some of it whoops actually use the uh, top of plate one so that I'm not and my plan here is I'll go ahead and epoxy a larger circle you know let me turn off this body really quick and turn off the vertical shaft and what else do I got? Sketch one. All right, cool. Uh, probably leave like a quarter inch over the edge. So I'll epoxy one sheet of it here. And again, I think this is one eighth is what I think it is. And then on the under underside, once that's epoxy down. And you know what, honestly, I may not even, just in case it needs to be repaired, it's one of those things. If it needs to be repaired, it can always just be scraped off. So I probably will just epoxy it down to make sure it doesn't move. But I then would flip this over and epoxy a couple more layers. And let's get our sketch. Sketch. Just fit, just to fill this hole. So I then epoxy however many more layers, which is like one and a half layers is what it really is, I think. until that hole is full. And if it's gonna be one and a half layers, then I would just do one more layer just to, uh, no, I'd have to do two more layers, really. Yeah, that might be a little bit awkward. I'll see what happens with that, how that goes together. But basically this is what we'll, I'll be building up by stacking flat sheets of, uh, what you call it, of rubber. Rubber, soft, there we go base plate so there's the uh, center plate there and then we got a vertical shaft so I'm gonna go ahead and make the bushing now new component and again this bushing may not work out I'm gonna have to ask my boss who does a lot of welding I don't do very much welding but I'll ask him whether or not he thinks the bushing can be welded straight to the plate because again I've never been in that situation to weld brass to steel uh, that's not what I wanted distance object is what I wanted so from the top of the plate three inches Oogie -doogies, and that's brass and if this doesn't work out then I'll backtrack and do what we saw in the other one which is 3d print whoops no you're selecting the wrong thing. 3D print a uh, housing for it and bolt the housing down, drill holes and bolt the housing down and see how well that works. One of those things, if it breaks, then we'll move on to the next step, which is either hollowing out the uh, inch, and a, uh, inch and a half uh, shaft so that I get an inch and a half tube with an inch and a quarter ID, maybe slightly above that to act as the sleeve in that case and that 100% I'll be able to weld down. So that's our plan of attack for getting to that point. Next, uh, if we hop back over to these guys, making a decision on how exactly this is supposed to be oriented. I, again, if this, when this lever gets down to here, gets down to this point, it's gonna be pushing yeah, that end will be pushing up that way. I'm trying to decide whether it's really necessary to be fancy with this 
upwards horizontal movement. For all I know, this could have been a design decision to indicate the top of the bottle. So, for example, you set this up so that the bottom of this edge is in line with the top of your bottle, and that will give you your stroke distance. That could be why that is like that, as opposed to these other two that I found, which are basically identical on this central housing here. And again, both of those, I'm assuming, just because this lever arm is going to be pushing down this way, which is going to exert some pressure this way and some pressure obviously against this hinge in this direction against this pivot point in this direction so that's why that's beefed up i'm assuming i'm going to probably just keep with this design here and if it doesn't work we will s resolve that issue when we get to it so let us new component Plunger housing, I'm going to call it. It's not really accurate because it's also the attachment point for the handle and whatnot. Uh, uh, until I think of a better name, we're going to call it plunger housing. We can always change the name later. Uh, next question is how do I want to design this? Because obviously I could start drawing it in this direction you know, take the center line of the shaft, draw it in this direction from left to right, and then symmetric extrude it. That's one option. The op other option is straight down and uh, do a design like this, and then come back and add the rib on the bottom side, the flange rib, whatever you want to call it, on the other side after we have this contour finished. Uh, that may actually be more accurate. The third way to do it would be to do it along this axis, axis, which is the y-axis it looks like according to my diagram. And this axis makes significantly less sense than either of those two, so we will not be doing it that way. I think we will design it from the top down though, because the uh, what benefit that gives me is hopping back over to the design, I'll be able to draw in, well, A, I'll be able to see, you know, how far out. Um, let me rephrase that. You see how all these are have some recessed features and whatnot just to save space. I'll be able to, for example, if I symmetric extrude this piece from the center in this uh, formation, I'll have a lot of extra material in the center here, which should be thinned out. By looking at it from the top down, I can make this center portion thinner. And I can also, instead of just having this be a square before I turn it into a circle, I can make that a circle from the get-go. So that is why I'll be doing it from top down. That is the rationale. And let me just throw a name on that one. Actually, what I should do is be a little bit more logical. Since that's top of shaft, we will go ahead and make that in the shaft component. It's one of those things I was, uh, I go qu somewhat quick when I'm adding all these construction planes. And I never, I, I don't often label them on my more complex things I go out of my way to label them because I know that I'll come back to them later from prior experiences I have some pretty bad experiences I mean not bad it's one of those things it's just a little bit of a waste of time it's not that big of a deal but situations where I go back to edit a design that I haven't looked at in several months and then I'm going through every single last plane trying to figure out which plane is which so I'm trying to get better at labeling these as I make them but obviously I've got three planes here that don't have names yet so That is something I'm still working on. Side of the shaft. Oh, and you see that? I already had the top of shaft plane. Uh, again, because I just, uh, I didn't label it and I made it for it to do the D shaft and it's one of those things that just happens really quick. So that's why should be labeling things. 
All right, cool. Yep. Just getting my perspective really quick. Look at, turn these boys off. And actually, I am going to also include this guy just so that we have some more perspective on this sketch. So I will turn that back to solid because we're going to want to extrude around that. And we will make that mm, five millimeter thick. We'll make that five millimeter thick. Again, this center part can be a bit thinner. Probably, let me see what. Make this parallel with that. Parallel to that guy. Let me see what quarter inch looks like. Actually, it's gonna have to be more than a quarter inch. So, quarter inch plus five mil plus 10 mil. I'm just thinking wall thickness in general, or casing thickness, whatever you wanna call it. Probably five mil for this design, might need to be thicker. Again, I'm not, it's really interesting to see how well this holds up. I'm not making any assumptions just yet about what is necessary for it to not explode when I go to use it. So we'll go with that. Yeah, so that is a good bit skinnier than this part. So that this is how I will do it. Otherwise, the other way I would have done it is just drag these straight out like this, you know? So in this case, um, take this line as a construction line. Have my center line here. And then we'll just connect all these points and that will get us centered. Uh, midpoint, that's what I meant to do. There we go, now we're centered. And then my plunger wants to be dead center of that. This bell here. Uh, the threads on this, as best as I can tell from the internet, the information is a little difficult to find. But as best I can tell from the internet, these are 5 8 threads. This, I actually haven't measured yet. Give me half a second. All right, that's about 20 mil. A little over 3 quarters of an inch. So uh, one of these things, that is basically the size that I wanna take the, um, for this part, let me back up a little bit. This, obviously I can't see inside of those pictures that we have over here. Let me get back to that. All right, obviously I can't see inside of this housing on any of these pictures. To know exactly for sure but I imagine just because it is not necessary for it to be any larger the piece that threads onto this than this guy so we'll go ahead and make this again 20 millimeter is what I'll make that I'll make that 20 millimeter and then I've never actually used a die to do threads before so this is gonna be a bit of experience but I take the uh, lathe. I also hardly ever use the lathe, so that will also be experience. So I'm getting a lot of experiences by doing this project. Well, at least in so far as lathe and using a die to put threads on a rod. But have a blank, take it down to 20 millimeter, put the threads on this part, the part that threads into here. On the back end, I think is so I kind of like this idea here where they've got the uh, place for the what you call to go into I am not sure how whether I want to how exactly I want to go to 
cut that if I want to do it directly into the shaft that I have running all the way through here. And in all of these pictures, I will point out that is plastic. Again, with 3D printed plastic, because it's not solid, that might be hey, that might be too much pressure on it. Although it's one of those things, it's a small enough piece that I may just 100% infill it, or otherwise knock the walls up to like seven or six or seven. I don't know. I've never gone as high as six or seven. I've only ever done up to four walls perimeters, four perimeters on the print. So if we knock it up to six or seven, maybe it holds up and maybe we do just 3D print a cap for it. Uh, we'll see what happens when we actually get there. Uh, the other thing to note is I see a bunch of bolts in here. From the other picture that I was looking at, I couldn't actually tell whether or not this is two clamshell pieces that go together. That would make sense. Uh, otherwise, this cap, you know, obviously should be able to just pop out. So I'm pretty sure it has to be two clamshell pieces, and that's the way I was planning on designing it. But I'm just going to mention that, yeah, see, like on these cast ones, I'm not sure how exactly that cap doesn't pop out because these don't look to be clamshelled especially because they're cast they appear to be cast at any rate cast aluminum so yeah it's one of those things our design will happen the way we do it because of the materials we have um, and for the time being I will plan on putting a plastic cap on it with flanges to help align the drawbar but if that changes it changes so back to fujon uh, we got this set up so on the inside here we said this was going to be 20 millimeter the question is obviously with all right i'm hopping back over to the other scene whoops not that one well, yeah, that one, just uh, because I wanted to say, obviously, this part doesn't necessarily need to be inside the machine, inside that housing. It can be outside, and if we look at the other one, that doesn't appear to have space for it to come in, and neither does that one to be retracted. So it's really just this design that, oh, and you know what? That may just be, so I saw this red, and I assumed that was red plastic covering the piece but that could just be the red plastic reflecting in the material which probably makes more sense yeah okay so we don't actually need to take up that piece uh how's that piece again i didn't see any reason to to begin with in which case back over here in fusion this is going to be 20 mil Uh, again, this is centered on our bottle. That's where I'm placing it. Uh, this outline being a rough representation of the center line. Well, it, it, it's concentric with our bottle at any rate. Whatever bottle we put in here, this line will be concentric with it. So there's our 20 millimeters for the throat of the bell thingy. And I should probably figure out what the name of this thing actually is. Bell housing or something. Um then we need some plastic around it and again for right now my nominal wall thickness is five millimeter and then we can go ahead and connect this up i don't think we need to necessarily do anything else at the moment yeah so we'll go ahead and extrude this down now and then we'll do the rest uh, fusion. Why is my profile open? Oh, derp. That's why. I made that into a constru uh, construction line because I didn't see us needing it, and it turns out we need it. Uh, the way I did it, anyway. Again, originally I was thinking I would just take this line and draw it down to here. So just take that and do something like that if necessary. Probably not though, probably do something more in line like that. But for right now, we're going to be greedy with this design and print as little plastic as possible. So we will go ahead 
and extrude this piece and we will be extruding downwards because the shaft is downwards yeah all right question is how big do we make this so if we assume that the power stroke on well not power stroke but the stroke length on the plunger is let's say three inches it's funny because these pictures seem like they're a little bit larger like that seems a little bit larger than three inches yeah it looks maybe more like four or five just comparing the size of the bell mouth that I have here to that although I will note that these slots and these ones this slot that the bar is going to ride down as it pivots over is only about an inch maybe so the stroke of this may actually be like two inches so let's say this moves down an inch between here and here and then you get another inch there so the stroke may actually only be two inches although as we can see the uh, overall housing I guess uh, I assume to keep it straight I'm assuming they're making the housing that large in order to make sure that it's stable so because obviously as this lever pushes on this is not pushing directly down on the plunger it's pushing at an angle both here and again when it rotates around to the other side it will be pushing it on in the back end of the plunger on an angle like this which will want it to make it want to wobble so I'm assuming that it's this long to take the wobble out so we will go ahead and make this six inches Uh, next thing, as you can see, they've got a spring in here. So let's go ahead and fatten that up to include the spring. It's one of these things where it honestly probably, yeah, see this one? I'm assuming there's, well, there has to be a spring. Otherwise, this would be falling down, right? This plunger would be falling down under its own weight. Or underneath the weight of the bell at any rate. Well, its own weight and the weight of the bell, yeah. So this plunger should be extended right now if there wasn't a spring in there. So I'm going to do it like this actually. I'm going to instead uh, just include the thickness in the original extrusion. So uh, what do I want to, so rather than go out and buy, one second, right here, I happen to have spring wire. Uh, one of my projects that I have worked on numerous different designs for is a spring winder slash bender, wire winder slash bender. So I do have music wire to make springs out of. And this particular size is decently, uh oh, did I just lose a tail? Not bueno. One second. Uh, this particular size is surprisingly strong for its thickness, it's 0.22, but once you start bending it, it actually gets, it's actually pretty hard. So I'm expecting this because all it's doing is holding up this much weight plus the 5 8 ish yeah, 20 millimeter rod that will be running through here. So since it's only doing the 20 millimeter rod plus this, I'm not expecting it to be particular, this assembly to be particularly heavy. So I probably can just go ahead instead of buying a custom, well, not necessarily a custom spring, but a pre-made spring. I probably will go ahead and wind this 0.22. Or, oh, that's right. This is my 0.037. My 0.22 is the other one. Yeah, my other one's 0.22. This one's 0.307. And before we permanently lose this end, let me get this end somewhere safe. Uh-oh, where'd that end go? All right, blunders aside, that is where we'll be going with this. I'm probably going to wind this spring directly onto the shaft while it's in the lathe. Again, since I don't use the lathe ter terribly much, that's not something I've ever done before. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. And obnoxiously, I may have some issues with this wire. Okay. Back to designing because again, we only got an hour to get as much of this done as we can. So 
it's 0 0.035, 0 0.037, 0 0.037 wire. Uh, we'll do, we'll assume that when it compresses it, I mean, it's really not gonna get that much larger. I mean, it's not gonna get larger at all. That's right, it's compression spring, not a torsion spring. I'm used to working with torsion springs. Torsion springs change shape when you uh, exert force on them. Uh, depending on which direction it ends up going, it really shouldn't go opposite. If it goes opposite, it does get larger, which is why you kind of want to make sure just in case you have some space in there so it doesn't explode. The pressure from the spring getting larger, it's not supposed to go that direction and get larger, but just in case, normally account for it. But with a tor uh, compression spring, it doesn't actually get, that's me playing with the spring. It doesn't actually get larger when you compress it, so we don't have to worry about that. Therefore, uh, let's get rid of this guy. That is our outer wall. Uh, we will leave, if it's 0.037, yeah, 0.1 should be fine. Uh, actually, you know, there's gonna be some spring back when I wind it. I'm not sure what the spring back is going to be. Uh, I guess I'll, it's one of the things it doesn't necessarily matter whether I leave an eighth of an inch in there. Well, that's, yeah, that's an eighth of an inch on each side, so that gets kind of big. Yeah. All right, I'm going to leave it at point one and hope that the spring back on the spring isn't that much. One of those things I'm not, actually, I have, when I've done springs, I haven't really done any calculations with them. I just have been making winders and therefore I am a bit ignorant on what to expect that should be five millimeter what to expect for uh, the spring back but hopefully hopefully this ends up being enough all right so springs gonna have to be housed in here which is why I'm cutting this out the question, oh, that's right. Uh, this is gonna be clamshell. I was gonna say, how do we get it in there? But it's gonna be clamshell. So we will go ahead and extrude it like that and then come back and extrude a part here so that it doesn't come back out. So minus five millimeter. And then Do, do, do. Sorry, I'm just thinking, is it? Yeah, I guess it's only gonna be the uh, point 0.1, so I guess we're gonna do the same exact thing down here. It feels like I should probably give myself some more space, but it's probably just me overthinking things. So we are going to trust ourselves here and not worry about it uh, again basically we've got five inches overall we're expecting let's say a three inch power stroke so from the bottom here uh, we did five millimeter on top so let's in theory this should be two inches in theory this should be two inches from the bottom that's where we should be at but we took away five millimeter from the top So that should be correct. Now I am going to go ahead because visualizing this might be a little difficult. Um, I more or less, you know, there you go. So to show you what's happening in there, the spring part, the spring is housed inside of this part. We've got two inches here for that only holds the 20 millimeter shaft and that in particular is going to keep it straight and then coming out the top here and it's going to have to only be 20 millimeters coming out the top here it's going to be a plastic cap the plastic cap can be this uh width it can be the full width of what we put in here for the springs to keep it inside but the top part that extrude that protrudes rather out the top can only be that 20 millimeter Although, because it's clamshelled, we could open it back up on the other side. So let me draw that really quick. 
let's go to midline and that's one of those things um sorry just a second body okay and then turn this off so here's the cutaway that we have again so this uh it's funny why can't i get the center line oh that's on another sketch isn't it yep it is so the cap that i put out here and this should probably more correctly be an arc but i'm using a circle really quick could look something like this right this is in theory what we're going to make but it could in theory uh was that my no where's we could do something like this right again not pretty but the general idea is there so we could have oh no we couldn't i take it back i'm being stupid ignore what i just said because <laughs> that needs to go down through this gap so yeah it this is the maximum of what we're going to be able to make um and actually let me go ahead and do this i will just uh one of those things rather than yeah i probably should i take it back i take it back all right let's back up a little bit i should have made a new i was going to do this without making a new component and then making the new, co new component on the extrude but let's be more professional with this cap plunger plugger plunger cap okie dokies and now we can go ahead and do exactly what we just did click intersect intersect a body okay look at it look at it it's awesome turn this stuff off yeah and then let's get back to drawing that so here is a reference line here is our bottom line that reference line is like that we'll need these lines and the game plan here again we're i'm going to switch to an arc but the game plan is to uh actually let me draw a line from the bottom here i'm going to use the revolve tool is what i'm getting at here what i keep on trying to get out of my mouth until i keep on interrupting myself we'll be using the revolve tool so that is how we will do this and then this we will just keep at five uh one of these things okay so here's the other uh design decision in theory what i might want to do here just to keep the spring from wiggling around is have the spring recessed inside of this housing allow it to go up into the housing along with the plunger uh the plunger actually you know what that is probably a good idea one way or another i was going to say the spring's not necessarily a big deal because the spring's not going anywhere it's trapped around the plunger but it is a good idea to recess the plunger in here in which case i'm going to want a little bit more meat uh, not 10 inches though 10 millimeters so this will give us 10 millimeters to this point if i cut off here and i'll probably cut off a little bit lower to uh fit the plunger the 20 millimeter shaft into all right and finish drawing and revolve revolve tool this is the first time we're using the revolve tool on this channel fun stuffs that's how the revolve tool works you take a profile take an axis and then you can design decide how much you want to revolve it around so there's 180 25 but generally speaking you use it because you want a circle so there's that and then actually i will do this the opposite way let me just color this as plastic plastic and we'll make that come on oh download don't have it on this user yet 
make that an aqua blue and we'll come back here and create the plunger and then I'll use the plunger to cut out the um, plunger cap cut its own space out of the plunger cap uh, plunger shaft is what I should probably call it and we will go ahead and go down three I think whoops did not actually get a construction plane there minus three millimeters okay and that will be the height that we'll be doing uh, it at uh, we want this here turn that off to make things easier to see and as I keep on saying 20 millimeters is the size of that shaft that we'll be putting in here that can be a construction line and then we extrude this guy and we will extrude this bodies we will go ahead and extrude this all the way down to here and then we will put the threads for the thread housing on from the bottom there whatever distance this is uh, new body is fine and then hop back up here to housing turn that cap on assemble or not assemble join combine that with that and cut and keep tools and if we go back to our section analysis there we can see it recessed now inside of the cap and that will keep so now the cap is held in place at the top and held in place down here at this uh, intermediate section so the shaft should not really wobble so we are looking pretty good um it is three o'clock where i'm at right now so in theory I'm going to need to be getting off soon, but I want to get some more of this done first. So one of those things, priorities, priorities. So let's go ahead and create these threads. Uh, threads, 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 there they are, there. And these are five eighths threads, six to five, and not the full length. Instead, according to my calipers, we want all right it says about three eighths um, I'm gonna call it 20 millimeters it's a little shy of all right not 20 millimeters 10 millimeters is a little shy of 10 millimeters I want to have some extra threads plus I'm not 3d printing this so even if it's a little off it's not that big of a deal so I will do 10 millimeter. And again, since I'm not 3D printing this, I don't have to model them. I'll just go ahead and keep the computer generated graphics there. Well, it's all computer generated, but you understand what I mean. Just the uh, skin, the appearance of threads on that. Uh, next thing I wanna do, get done before we leave today. Actually, man, we're so close to finishing this. I think I'm just going to push my time here. Right? Because we are... Let's take a look at it. Right? So, holes in this to pin it in place. Um, I also wanted to model a hole up on this guy, which I would put in. Uh, I probably end up... It's one of these things. It's a little difficult... So I'm going to have this in the middle. I should be able to get that relatively straight, right? So maybe I go ahead and affix the bushing to the shaft. Yeah, the only problem is, so, hmm, I was thinking I would have to, after I get all this assembled, drill the hole down here to keep this arm from swinging back and forth. Because right now, as you can see, 
you can swing, you can swivel this back and forth right now, which is one of the benefits of the square rod uh, using square tubing is that it, it's not going to rotate inside the housing. But I'm going to have to pin this since these are both round and therefore they can rotate. Uh, and therefore, since they can rotate, uh, it needs to be kept in place. Otherwise, as you're pulling down and you know putting pressure on it, you could in theory accidentally twist it, which could cause serious problems. So this is going to need a hole down here. I'm just not sure how exactly I'm going to do that hole because there's not a good way of making sure that that hole is perpendicular to this edge slash parallel to this edge at the same time that I'm making sure that this whole uh, that this whole uh, arm here is parallel with that edge perpendicular to that edge this D shaft there's not a good way like I said to do that so I'm gonna have to figure that out uh, the other thing that we got to do is model up the arm so uh, how long is this gonna take me it can't take me that long right yeah, all right, it's not gonna take me that long. Let's do it. And if you can hear the neighbors, I apologize for that one. Mowing the lawn. So let's go ahead and start with the pinholes. Project that, project that. Whoops, not that. Uh, try again. Project that. Project that. Okay. And I've got the paint select tool on somehow. Have yet to figure out how that works. And we'll pin it at the top and the bottom. And this is one of those things. Obviously, however accurate I get with a mill here on where this first hole is will determine how well exactly this all sits. Also, the other thing that I should mention is with our current design, we are only going to have four positions. One, two, three, four, oh, five positions. One, two, three, four, five. So, question is, how necessary is it to make this so short, uh, so long, this body? So for every one of these holes that we're short from, so for example, if we make this four inches overall instead of five inches, then we gain an extra position. We can slide this down in extra position, which is useful. Um, my brother did say, however, that he wasn't particularly concerned about movement. Uh, this just means that one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so 10 holes does make sense. So as this slides down, when it is at the bottom hole, it will be using this hole here on the top hole, if I'm looking at that correctly. So we're not wasting any holes here. Uh, well, I say wasting, but I can always go back in and just not drill them. I can just, if we were, if we did have intermediate holes here that we'd not be able to, to connect to, I could just not drill those holes. So, yeah, all right. I guess we leave that as is. So let's go ahead and knock those out. Distance all. Symmetric. Symmetric's not going to work. And we are going to have to flip that. And... Okay, it is just cutting the plunger, even though it lit up and activated everything. All right, so there's our holes for uh, pinning it in place. Uh, we need the slot here for the shaft to go through. So let's go ahead and actually, what construction lines do I have? Face of mounting holes. Um, boo, 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 boo. Nope. That is down from there, so nope. So I guess just top of shaft is what we got to work with. I'll project this. Now, for the handle, and this is something... Actually, you know what? Let's put this sketch on hold really quick and back up, and I'll do the handle first. So let's draw that handle in. 
I'm going to take a quick look at the reference fit pictures. So that screw hole is above. That screw hole is above or parallel. Above or parallel. So that's how we'll put it. We'll put this in line with the top of our cap. Just because it seems like they are all on the same page, which means that they're all following, presumably, some kind of guideline. So, let's get that, get that. There may also be an optimal distance for this lever point. I'm going to assume that our pin, screw, whatever it is, should probably be right here. Um, I projected, uh, sorry, let me redo that. Nah, I don't need to redo that. I projected this ball, but I really want to intersect on that instead. That way I have the center point. And let's turn things off to make it easier to see. And construction lines. So now I can get the center point here. make that so this will be our screw which is our pivot point our screw is our pivot point well not necessarily a pivot point it's the pivot point it's the opposite end it's the uh far lever arm ish point however i would say that if my mind was working correctly we're putting that parallel to that and for this i i think i am going to use a screw now the question is what size do i want to use uh quarter inch is what we have at work i have six millimeters i feel like i should have some eights around here no i don't have some eights i don't think i think i have some tens so 10 is a bit shy of a uh well 10 we just said was a little over three eighths i forget i think it's a little over three eighths 10. checking the calipers really quick calipers say yeah it's about three eighths so I have some 10 millimeters I can use uh, let me do this actually and I'm just gonna really quick sketch out the lever arm oops don't do that this is going to be one inch flat stock. We have eighth inch thick flat stock is what we have at work. I am probably going to put two of those pieces together and then attach them to make them quarter inch. If we look at these pictures over here, they look like when I'm looking at them, they look like quarter inch flat stock. So I'll probably take two uh, pieces of eighth inch and then attach them. I'm thinking just to make it look nice rather than having it bolted all the way down. I might drill the one and then plug weld them together and then grind the plug weld down flush and then just paint it over. But regardless, this is going to be a one inch and this is going to be parallel. This is going to be my center line parallel to that and perpendicular and center line go through that there we go and then i can put that there and that actually does not look like it's going to fit and that's already a huge bolt actually can i shift this up no i can't shift this up because this is with that interesting um huh so how thick are these handles uh, I guess they go way up in the air. Okay, yeah, they go way up in the air, so my angle really should be... Well, that doesn't change the fact that that's the center point, right? Although it is the center point on the end. So if I do this instead... Let's see. Do that. Do that. Do that. And then... Drag this back. Whoops. You are getting a little bit crazy there, bud. Okay. Let us constrain this a bit more. Uh, 
And actually, this is one of those situations where... Now, nah, I want to draw this first. I was just thinking that maybe I should make the draw bar first. But... I want to get the mounting point done first. Oh, I'm on the coincidence tool. That's why I can't drag. Alright. So, you... That, if we make that tangent to that, okay, and then we make that, uh, let's call it an eighth inch plus an eighth inch. All right, so that hole has an eighth inch from the edge. There we go. And then the overall length of this thing, I'm going to call, uh, what do we want to call it? I wonder if we can get away 10 inches. It might be a foot. Let's call it a foot. All right, there we go. So that's what that's going to look like. So that's sticking. Eh, I don't know if that's necessarily unreasonable. The stick out there. Yeah, that's probably correct. I think that's correct. Okay. Um, the other thing that we could adjust Let's look really quick. Nah, I'm gonna assume that this, so I made my anchor point tangent to this tube right here. I'm gonna assume that's accurate. Uh, the, only th the only change being that rather than this tube being tangent, I'm going to have a buffer. Uh, so there should be a wall right here. So actually, no, I don't need the buffer because basically I see the thickness in here, right? So what I should do, let's get rid of this line and intersect the body instead. That way we get all the walls. So now we have all the walls so I can see this wall here. Uh, make these guys construction lines. Kadookies. So I will go ahead and how do we want to do this? I think I want to make it tangent to this line here, which is probably the same tangent line as I had before. Uh, it doesn't look like it actually. It looks like we're probably a little bit off. All right, well. That's probably okay. And then I'm making that line that will be casing around the bolt. So this is our bolt here. Bolt's tangent to that. This would be the casing, but that casing can't be intersecting there because that will not work. Uh, where's my coincidence mark? I don't see my coincidence mark. All right, so instead, we'll make sure the casing is not, is, eh, give ourselves a little bit of leeway, millimeter, whoops, not an inch, one millimeter of leeway, and that millimeter of leeway should be tangent to this line there. So that will be the position of our pivot point and this housing I will go ahead and go tangent to that corner to keep everything kind of uniform and flowing. So let's turn that on. And then same thing over here. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit of an arbitrary point. Tangent and click. And then the question is how much do we want here? And I don't have a good answer for that one. It's basically just a look. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't, well, it probably does a little bit. It probably adds some support, but it's largely just look. So I'll just make it quarter inch. And then we will open that up. So 
Where's my body at? Uh, this is all symmetrical, so actually I can just do symmetric. Mm, join. And it's not working. Okay. Two-sided is then. Object. There. Two object. There. Wow, that looks massive. Okay. Let me look at this again. What did I make that? Oh, I just had that as a random size. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> again. Uh, if I want it to be a screw, as opposed to a rod, then I'm looking at 6 millimeter quarter inch, or a 10 millimeter. I think I'm going to go with the 10 millimeters that I have go laying around here somewhere. Well, actually, no. They're at work right now, aren't they? Yeah. So... <laughs> Figure out what construction line is exactly holding me up here. Delete that. Oh, that's referenced by this, right? Um, why can't I change this? There it is. Okay, I can change this. It's just, it says it's constrained. Uh, 10 millimeter. It doesn't want to be 10 millimeter. Okay, so I've got too many constraints going on right now, and it does not want to cooperate. So let's start getting rid of stuff until it wants to cooperate. Tangent. Tangent. Okay, you are now 10 millimeter. You are now 10 millimeter. You are, well, you're going to be whatever you can be. What constraint is currently holding us back? Okay. So this, I wanted tangent to that. to do that is going to be that divided by 2 plus eighth inch okay that is going to be tangent to that right and this should only be be the only thing left so If I make that f not five inches, five millimeters, if I make that five millimeters, okay, now you don't want to work. I understand. You worked when I wanted you to be five inches. Why? Why, 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 why? Let's kill this stuff. Try again. Five millimeters, okay. That's our five millimeter wall thickness that we've been talking about. Get that tangent to that, that tangent to that. Okay, that's not going to be tangent to that at that point. Okay, gotcha, so that's what's happening here. Uh, it has to be larger than five millimeters in order for that line to be tangent. Some of us are not as good at geometry as other people. And we want that to be the minimum. Theoretically, I can make that. Oh, no. It's letting me make that less, right? Okay, just to a point, though. Just to a point. So let us say that that angle is 45. So the resting state of this is 45. All right. All right. And that will dictate the thickness around there, at least given the constraints that we currently have. And again, 
put that guy back in and he can be whatever we like him to be and back to trying that again so body two-sided two object yoinks two objects yoinks and join okay and then knock the hole out for the screw body distance all let's see if we can do symmetric here we can do symmetric here cut okay and then we just need the draw bar so let's add a component new component okay and since i already have this uh sketch up of it over here we're just going to go ahead and project that save myself a little bit of time uh, this may come back to bite me in the future in theory but we will take our chances and yeah okay i was just thinking about back to thickness uh symmetric overall size okay we got that next thing i want to do draw a bar and not a draw bar but a draw handle draw bar is different let's grab top of d shaft uh, that side of d shaft top of d shaft what did i move revert i want to project this thickness here onto this and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and sweep this profile along this guy right here in order to um how do i want to do this <laughs> so we need space for this draw bar i i think i'm probably going to do it this way let's at what point did i drag something okay i guess that point component draw handle since uh we need space for this draw handle to spin around and i one of those things i can radius these corners but i'm probably going to just clear out that radius anyway again the uh the sweep tool is probably what i'm gonna end up with i'm just looking at the time it's almost 3 30 and we're so close but nah i'm gonna finish it it's one of those things uh i was waiting on something to show up but it obviously hasn't so i don't actually need to do anything just yet question is so we want to sweep around this do 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 all right we're gonna do this the easier way uh for right now i'm just gonna go ahead and create a new drawing on the center plane center plane i'm going to project the bar gonna project this hole right here so that i have something to be concentric to let's turn some stuff off uh, turn that extra sketch off boink boink not that one do that do that concentric to that guy and now this is the whole range that these corners will sweep through so we'll just do this part this way bodies uh, two-sided and then we'll go to the draw handle distance to object and that appears to be this side 
I think that's a positive number. And distance to object, that side. And whoops, that'd be a whoops. So our issue here, that's a double whoops actually. I see this, you see this orange and purple right here? That means I cut both. So that's a double whoops. Uh, we also want to, so obviously we're clearing out the inside here, but the fact of the matter is, is that we probably want to clear out everything above this line anyway. So I will go ahead and project that body, do that, and then do actually, I guess I'll leave all this open or rather uh, as regular lines. And then we will do all that, all those profiles. And let's try this again. Distance, two-sided, two object, bam, uh, <laughs> wrong object, handle, bam, distance, two object, handle, bam, cut. And then what we also want to do is, oh, Dolph. Don't want to cut both of them though. Try that again. Uh, all right. One more time, one more time. Technically speaking, I don't need to redo that, but my OCD is kicking in. I don't have much OCD, so the very little OCD that I have is kicking in and I don't want to be seeing the purple on the bar, on the uh, timeline when it's not cutting purple sided to object and those are backwards but we will survive and this is cut now and it's only cutting that all right there we go all right now we can sweep or revolve we could also revolve this is also an option i think is this an option it's an option if i put yeah, it should be an option if I put an axis through this uh, axis through, axis through, axis through. There we go. Put an axis through here. Let's see if this works. So basically, I need to sweep the other. Did that not cut? Oh, that did not cut. My bad. Bodies. I also needed the bottom half of the circle here. There we go. Much better, okay. So if I do this, turn this on, take my, uh, not extrude, but revolve. I think revolve will do it. Use that profile, use that axis, and then revolve it. Let's see. Oh, the path is tangent, so let's try sweep instead, like I said. I was going to go with sweep in the first place. We will try sweep. And the path... Ah, uh, I don't actually have a good path for it yet. Um, we can make the path really quick. Yeah, there, it's one of those things. There's a bunch of different ways of doing this, depending on what kind of work you want to be doing. Um, I think I'm just going to... The, the alternative here, so the more straightforward way to do this is to just put a take a profile, you know, uh, for example, top of D-shaft, and then just draw or project the top side of this and then just extrude straight down. That is the more direct way of doing this. Uh, what I'm doing here is probably, it's arguably less useful. Actually, since I'm being less useful, maybe I do revolve it. Eh, it's extra work one way or another. 
I guess I'll just keep the uh, easy sketch planes. The other way to uh, revolve it would be to uh, create a plane at angle on this axis parallel to the center line of the draw bar and or parallel to uh, well it would still be offset in that case but eh, yeah no this is this is easier anyway I'm just gonna do it this way and shut up so we'll do this we will do this uh, let's arc center line and project. Uh, let's project the actual draw bar and project this circle. Uh, don't let go of that one. Stop it in escape. Okay. Turn this other sketch off. Turn this body off. Turn that body off. Do that. Turn off window select. One of these days I'll figure out what turns window select on. All right. Uh, so anyway, point being is we just need an arc to uh, a path to move this profile along. So I'm just going to throw an arc in here. Use that pivot point as my center point. Go up to there and down to there and Huh. I feel like, oh uh, bother, perpendicular or parallel, either one works. And this angle, uh, maybe not that angle, uh, maybe this angle. Trying to think, uh, how do I want to dictate the length of this arc is what I'm trying to figure out right now. And I probably should project this body. Okay. And then I set a three inch. So this is three inches right here. There's three inches. That doesn't look like two inches on the bottom. Did I do six inches? I did six inches. Okay. I made it six inches and I forgot. There we go. So I am just going to do that. Okay. And we can get rid of these guys. So that should sweep. Um, is that actually three inches? So not really right because the bottom of that and eh, let's just do four do it four. call it a day we don't need all four we won't be using all four but we'll make it work so sweep that guy along that path and whoops not intersect cut and turn the body on and that didn't work Oh, the path is tangent to the profile. All right, you know what? I need a little bit more time and it is already 340. So yeah, I needed to wrap up a while ago. So we will finish this off later on. It's only a few more steps. And obviously I am not thinking about this in the correct manner at this point. And it may be because I'm trying to get out of here. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for any comments you leave in the future. Didn't get any comments this episode. Uh, hope this is all fun and interesting to you and hope to continue doing it in the future. I uh, hope this really works out. So thank you for any support and I hope you have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, wherever you're at in the world.